Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be the next video on the NHL as we're going to look at the Buffalo Sabres and their key players and prospects as they head into the future, as we did with Arizona, Anaheim, and as well as the Boston Bruins thus far, and have done multitudes of videos as I'm a Philly sports fan first and foremost, but love the overall sports of each one of these four as well. But did a bunch of Flyers videos recently as well if you want to check them out. But let's get into the Sabres. The Sabres, similar to the Ducks and Coyotes, can take advantage of the draft. They have three first-round picks. Florida and Vegas is a later first round. Obviously, theirs is upper. But in this draft, if you're able to get some steals in the later first rounds, or maybe even a Seamus Casey, who in some mocks is projected late, and he's a very good offensive defenseman, I think when you watch him, not just his highlights, but his scouting tape that will show low lights and not just high, I think he plays a game similar to Chris Letang. I'm not saying he's going to be Chris Letang, but I think he plays a game very similar to Chris Letang. And he can at least be a mini version of Chris Letang, let's put it that way. I do think Alex Tuck coming to the Buffalo Sabres is going to be mighty for them going forward. He's a local area kid. I think that really helps. He's played well at Slovich. I think is a guy that CBJ should look to keep around for the foreseeable because it's going to help to ingratiate people, I should say, into that team. Casey Middlestad, I would say at this point, is in the flip him for a guy that also hasn't worked out for somebody else stage, but also I believe he can still be a good player by age 25. He's only 23. I don't think he's ever going to be an eighth overall pick, but can he be somebody that equates to a good third-round talent that produces 40 points in the season, 50 points in the season, and probably more like 40, And but it just becomes a good overall skater, maybe rounds out a defensive game more? Yeah, we've seen multitudes of guys do that in the NHL, so I think he could do that. Jack Quinn is my biggest player to watch going into next season. Dylan Cousins is right there with him, but Cousins already showed good strides where Quinn only got to play two games. He's a guy that I think could have a chance to be a above 20 goal scorer in his first full season. And I think Cousins next year is going to get to an above 20 goal scorer, but is more of a playmaker at heart, but is still going to be a guy that, say, gets 45 assists with 22 goals or something like that. Uh, next season would be, I wouldn't be surprised if he does that well because this team around him is going to continue to get better um, as well, so that's a big key. When it comes to UFAs, I would say the guy that matters the most for them, honestly, when it comes to their forward core, is Hema Stroza, because Hema Stroza, Pirlo Wisdom, loved him. He's a guy that's about 5'9", a little bit taller than I am. I'm like 5'7". Um, but he's a guy that plays with that high energy. If you ever need to just have a shift that you're trying to get the energy back in your team's favor because your team looks a little bit dead, Vinny Hema Stroza is definitely one of those guys you put out there. He's not one of the sexiest or complete players out there by any stretch, but he makes up for it in the way he goes about his business. Uh, when it comes to the defensemen, Butcher I see leaving. Ethan Prowl is basically more of an AHL defenseman, so you might as well re-sign him because he's a solid eighth or something like that defenseman that's an AHL defenseman. Uh, Jimmy Schultz, I would keep him around. He kind of looks like to be the makings of a late bloomer. And then Davidson, he's played... There's no, again, he kind of goes into the prow category. You might as well because he's cheap. You don't have to keep him around. That's kind of whatever happens. When it comes to their defense, though, Colin Mill was a defenseman. Did he have a great year this year? No, but did he get better as the year went on? Yes. He's a guy that I would say is a guy they should keep around depending what the expectations are of Buffalo because they started showing much better play this year with Tage Thompson playing in that game. Olison and uh, Skinner being a great first line. Krebs is going to get better. Middle stat, we'll see what happens. But Krebs and Tuck are going to get better. And then you got Cousins and Quinn. So you already named multiple guys in the forward core. Ocposo came back last year, bounced back. Samuelson, I think, is a good defenseman with Darlene and Owen Power you got there. I also really like Yokoharu. And then Bryson and Fitzgerald. Uh, one of those guys might end up making a steady and starter in the NHL. The other will probably end up becoming a seventh defenseman. But when we go to their defensemen, they have some pretty good like Ryan Johnson, who they picked in 2019 out of the USA. They have some pretty good defense prospects. Nyberg as well, who they picked all the way back in 2016. Uh, but th th they do have some options there. I would say Ryan Johnson's the guy that's a man to look out for and see how he continues to develop out of uh, USA. He played for the Junior Ducks way back, but he played the USA U-20s and U-19s. Did good there. He played in the University of Minnesota. He's not the sexiest offensive-minded defenseman, but he plays a good complete game and can make the right plays in the offensive zone. He's just never going to wow you in his point share, but he's a good defensive defenseman, a guy that I think is going to be able to round out and kind of shut down guys in this league <clears throat> um, from the left side. So I would say he's a guy to keep an eye out for. He's not going to be one of those prototypical top-line guys that produce 57 points to 70 points, I think, 
on top of being solid defensively, I think he's going to be great defensively, potentially. That then starts to lose his point because with the way he developed in college, I think that's where he's realizing his game has to become more well-rounded defensively and then offense second because that's what's going to make him make it uh, the best at the next level. But when it also comes to defense, uh, I would say another guy that they might look to keep just because he plays defense and forward court, and this is kind of the last guy, because they don't have as much guys that you would shout out ridiculously on defense as prospects. I would say Johnson Nyberg, if he ever uh, does end up playing over here, because he's always played good in Sweden. He played good at the University of Connecticut, but then went back to Sweden and has been a good defensive defenseman, nothing offensively really at all, but a good defensive defenseman in Sweden. So if you're able to bring him over and be like their Adam Janing, but we'll have to see the older version of Janing. What's the big meat and potatoes of the Sabres is their forward core of their prospects. Even uh, already down in the minors, you got Weisbeck, who I think has a chance to, even as a 5'9 guy, be maybe a Vini Hinas Boza at least, so he could be a solid player. Uh, Picard isn't a bad uh, little guy either. Either as well, so I'd so say if one or two of those guys make it, that's nice to have those guys. Bloom is a guy that has to grow into his body more than 95th pick of 2021, but Josh Bloom out of Canada has developed nicely. Uh, he's 6'2", 182, so you would like to see him fill out a little bit more, but with Saginaw, he was almost a points-per-game guy with 30 and 31. So I think he's going to continue to get better, but Brandon Biro is another guy that I think might end up being a solid bottom six guy that you can fill into your lineup, but the meat big guys uh, is uh, Paul Tafoff, uh, Procourt Paul Tafoff. I always have to try to say his name three times over, and then Steven Sadarian, those guys from the 2021 draft. I would keep your eyes out on them, the two Czechs, and how they continue to develop. They might have the Czech duo there with those two going forward because they are left wing and right wing. Uh, Paul Tapoff uh, is a left wing, and then Sadarian is a right wing. So I could see that being a great duo uh, going into the future, especially with Rochester as they continue to build that up. And then Eric Portillo, Devin Levi, those are great goaltending prospects, and that's what I'm going to close out with because I love talking about goaltenders. So I think all in all, the Sabres, this little video a little bit longer than the others, oddly enough it's about the Sabres, but the Sabres are moving in the right direction. Portillo's a great prospect, Levi's a great prospect, and this year they had their goaltending do enough. Their first line uh, is a good one with two guys that are younger and then one in Jeff Skinner that seems to be revitalizing his career. So I think they're moving in the right direction. Again, Cousins, uh, Quinn, you're going to have Paterka, I think, will play most of the season up. You got Lykanen, who I think is going to play most of the season up next year. So they're moving in the right direction slowly but surely in Buffalo. And it seems like with Kevin Adams, they're finally getting out of that massively long rut that they've been in. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Hit the subscribe down below. Bumpy Easy's with the YouTube channel growing to the goal of 260 or more by the start of July.